video. I'm back with another one, man. Like I haven't left, man. I haven't. <laughs> uh, this one is an update, man. This is crazy. This is an update on your boy, man. Your boy Diddy, man. He just got someone to testify against him. Hold on, y'all. We're going to turn this one up. Yeah, man. This is breaking news, man. Your boy Diddy, he just got something crazy going on, man. He got a witness that's saying he got a flash drive of several tapes. Four males, two women. That he's bringing forward. And allegedly, it was from the Kim Porter situation. You know, he has some memoirs as well that's allegedly from Kim Porter. These tapes, man, he released these tapes, man. It's over for your boy. He already have another charge that he's facing right now that was from a 10-year-old when he was 10. He's not 10 anymore, but when he was, he got a charge from that already as it is. On top of all the other charges just done came out man when I tell you this is crazy this dude just released it he released the footage all the tapes that he had in his possession he gave them up So it's letting you know that it's really about to start heating up right now even more. It's bad enough that Ray J is talking. I know Diddy ready to get him out of here. Ray J was talking about all that stuff, man. And then he tried to act like he wasn't involved. Like, we know that you're involved. We know you've been to all these parties. We know you done, you've been doing this, man, since way back when, man. And man, he's talking. That's why he had the altercation with Diddy Kids in L.A. It ran up on him, and allegedly Chris Brown diffused the situation. And Ray J called Wack 100. Wack 100 is ready. He said it's up from here. But now these tapes done got put out. Man, it's about to shake it up, man. If they put this public, man... Your boy Diddy is, is 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 ruined, man. I mean, completely ruined. I mean, he already is in a bad, bad, bad look right now, as it is. But with these tapes, man, then this 10-year-old, when he was 10, year old, 10 years old, he got Ray J, he's talking about he got a TV broadcasting news show, and he's talking. Besides Jaguar, right? Besides Gene Deal, the old ex bodyguard just passed. Allegedly, it was tied to him because he was about to release the information, too. I mean, it's a lot of people that's been passing lately, and a lot of things been happening. I mean, Ali Carter says she got some information she's about to release that's going to shake up the industry even more. So just by this dude releasing this information with these tapes, man. Boy, y'all about to be seeing something crazy jumping off real soon, man. So I just want to give a quick update on that, man. I ain't trying to stay on here too long, man. But um, yeah, let me know what y'all think about this, man. This is new release footage, man. That's just literally just coming out. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, man. Let's talk about this, man. This could be a topic we could do on the live. Like, we could talk about this one as well, as well as the little dirt scenario, because that's big and trending, real big and trending, man. Big and trending. The Diddy, the, the little dirt, man, it's big and trending, man. Your boy Thug being free, release, man, it's big and trending. You know, so when y'all check this out, man, about your boy P. Diddler, man, how many of y'all dressed up as him on Halloween? I seen some people, man, on my feed that was dressing up as him on Halloween, man. One of, even one of my boys was doing it too that, one that I'm good with too man he did that same thing man so that's you know that's cool to see everybody keeping his name alive man it's just a funny thing for Halloween man cause you
you already know he'd have been diddling around on Halloween. It would have been turned up right now. But yeah, man, check that out, man. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, 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 man. Get me hyped up. Get me hyped up, man. Appreciate the love and support as always, man. You know, always a blessing, man, to, to be rocking with y'all, man. We all family now. That's how we're going to keep moving, man. And uh, to the next one, man. Y'all stay safe, stay blessed, stay warm, man. Stay happy, man. Peace and love, man. I'll check y'all on the next one, man. I'm out. have the feds been in contact with you? I did watch your YouTube interview. I saw as of two weeks ago they haven't been in contact with you. What about today? Yes. So they have been in contact with you. Is that why you're here today? Yes. Okay. Security. Oh, wow. So they. So were you surprised or was that the call that you were kind of waiting for? Surprised. Oh. Do you feel like the interview had, like, like had anything to do with it or? Yes. Yeah? Um, how do you know Sean Combs? Generation. Frank Lucas was my godfather and his father, and then we both was in the music business since, for 30 years together. So you personally know him, have Not who, know who personally. Uh, Sean Combs. Not personally. But you know of him, he knows I of know you. Of him, yeah, I used to be in Tupac, Hussein Fatal. He stopped a lot of my music. Um, a lot of other people who didn't care about him. You understand? It's not around today. Right, so um, in from Def Jam Records. Mm -hmm. You made a lot of allegations, right? Um, are you expected to eventually turn those things over, or well, we're... that's what we're going to head over to do now. So we have a hearing now to determine what we're going to do in terms of what documents we be will have to turn over and what documents we do not. Have. So why were you in court today? Just to give testimony to the grand jury. Um, he was subpoenaed by the court, so as we all know, if you don't answer a subpoena, you will. The marshals will come to your house as they came to his house and they will bring you here. So that's why we're here today. I know you can't mention celebrities per se. You did mention some in the, in the interview. Um, so just to clarify, you can back that up with actual factual footage. We, we have, yeah, it's things that we have, but we gotta go to the other courthouse. So I don't know if that's the, any more questions, but we gotta, we got another hearing. Are you nervous or do you feel cool? Nah, I ain't never nervous. The only thing that's fair to me is God. I know you did mention what was on the flash drive before. Would you be able to kind of go over that now? Or is that something that you can't discuss? No, we're trying to just go to discuss that now, what we will be able to talk to in terms of what was available and what, what was on those flash drives. Okay. But it was the book, so. So it, so, so it is Kim Porter's book, but not necessarily some of the stuff with the celebs that were mentioned besides. It's hers, nobody touched it. Oh, so it is her official yeah. book. Yes, nobody. And, and, and no one touched nobody it? Nobody altered it, no. So it's not the copy that the gentleman said that he was selling before, no? No. It's two different copies, that one was edited have the So you're saying that the other copy was an actual real copy even though it the family a, said it, it wasn't. Was a derivative work. It was edited. The only way the family yeah. say that is because um I forgot his name. I'll be sure. Yeah. Yeah. And besides that, I didn't know. A lot of stuff their mother did they didn't know. Hmm. I like to say apologize to the mother and the family for the picture being on front of it. Right. You understand? I didn't put it there. Right. So, you know, they got to worry about bigger things right. than what her diary was. You understand? Right. They should have started worrying when he was beating her. Right. When you start worrying about your mother after the fact. Right. So, the book, do you think that now, do you think it'll ever like be open to the public or after this? With, or uh, That'll be the next thing. We'll, we'll, I've been contracted to go to Amazon and work out whatever legalities that may have existed prior so that we can republish the book. Wow, so the public will get to see her actual words yes. and thoughts. So, so, very soon, the actual unedited version. We'll be that, putting that out soon. So, I mean, I'm, so I'm wondering, do you own the rights, I guess, or how does that work? I guess I own rights. It's given to me, right? I'll say, possession is not for the law. So. What, what was on those flash drives? Okay. But it was the book, so. So it, so, so it is Kim Porter's book, but not necessarily some of the stuff with the celebs that were mentioned besides? It's hers, nobody touched it. Oh, so it is her official yes. book? Yes. Nobody and 
and, and no one touched and it. Nobody altered it. Okay. So it's not the copy that the gentleman said that he was selling before. No. No. It's two different copies. That one was edited, and we have the original right, right. copy. So you're saying that the other copy was an actual real copy, even though it the family a, said it wasn't. It was a derivative order. It was it was the only way the family say that is because um, I forgot his name. Alex Short. Yeah. Yeah. And besides that, how do you know? A lot of stuff their mother did, they didn't know. Hmm. I'd like to say you apologize to the mother and the family. No, we're trying to go to discuss that now. And the family for the picture being in front of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't put it there. Right. So, you know, they got to worry about bigger things. Right. Than what her diary was. You understand? Right. They should have started worrying when he was beating her. Right. When you start worrying about your mother. After the fact. Right. So, the book... Do you think that now, do you think it'll ever like be open to the public or after this or? Uh, that'll be the next thing. We'll, we'll, I've been contracted to go to Amazon and work out whatever legalities that may have existed prior so that we can republish the book. Wow, so the public will get to see her actual words yes. and thoughts. So, so very simple, the actual unedited version. We'll that, be that out so I mean, I'm, so I'm wondering, do you own the rights, I guess, or how does that work? I guess the rights was given to me, right? Okay. And a family for the picture. I've been in contact with you. I did watch your YouTube interview. I saw as of two weeks ago they haven't been in contact with you. What about today? Yes. So they have been in contact with you. Is that why you're here today? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. So they so were you surprised or was that the call that you were kind surprise. of waiting for? Surprised. Oh. Do you feel like the interview had like like had anything to do with it or? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Um, how do you know Sean Combs? Generation. You know, Frank Lucas was my a godfather and his father. And then we both was in the music business since for 30 years ago. So you personally know him, have Not both, but know him personally. Uh, Sean Combs. Not personally. But you know of him, he knows know of you. Of him, yeah. I used to be in Tupac, you know, saying Fatal. He stopped a lot of my music. Um, a lot of other people who didn't care about him. You know what I'm saying? That's not around today. Wait, so I'm um, in. From Def Jam Records. Mm -hmm. Has been in contact with you. I you made a lot of allegations, right? Um, are you expected to eventually turn those things over or where? well that's what we're going to head over to do now so we have a hearing now to determine what we're going to do in terms of what documents will be we'll have to turn over what documents we do not have. so why were you reporting just to give testimony to the grand jury um he was subpoenaed by the court so as we all know if you don't answer a subpoena we will the marshals will come to your house as they came to his house and they will bring you here so that's why we're here today i know you can't mention celebrities per se you did mention some in the in the interview um so just to clarify, you can back that up with actual, factual footage. We, we have, yeah, it's things that we have, but we gotta go to the other courthouse, so I don't know if that's the, any more questions, but we gotta, got another hearing. Are you nervous or do you feel cool? Nah, I ain't never nervous. The only thing that's fair to me is God. You made a lot of- Between Diddy and Epstein, there's, there's, there's probably several thousand hours of footage here. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird that the people on those videos are lecturing the rest of us about our moral failings, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. What is that? Well, I mean, part of how they deflect attention from themselves is by you know, criticizing the morals of others. Yes. It's sort of like a preemptive moral strike. Those who are saying Trump is a threat to democracy are themselves actually the threat to democracy. It feels like we're getting to a place where the rest of us know too much. Like, what happens next now that we know all this? The kidnapper shown us his face. Like, what happens? Well... I think if uh, if Trump wins, we can do some house cleaning and shed light on things. I think at this point at 55, Puff's really considering that. But I believe he, he it'll be some other big names to fall. And for whatever reason, I don't know why. I think this might be the Super the last Super Bowl overseen by Jay Z. Oh, nigga, you fuck with transgenders. Nigga, you know, niggas, we've been. So that's what you was alluding to. That's what yeah, you was alluding to on that love. That's a fact. Which son? That's a the one look like it. Hey, Ghost, what's his name That's again? The one that look like him? Christian. That's Christian. Christian. Yeah. And the other one ain't his. See, we, you, know, you want to leave us alone, us that been around. No. He started whispering to the prince, like, I want her. Like, I want her. So that's when I started getting scared. Like, he want what? They have one of the girls asked, one of the models that was just, like, out of it. This bitch seemed like... She took every drink up in there. And she was like, are you going to Cuba with us? <laughs> and then they're like, the prince like, oh yeah, you're going to Cuba, right, Nia? And then Diddy's like, you're going to Cuba with us, right? You're going to Cuba, right? And I'm thinking like, Diddy? Because everything is funny energy. I got to get up close to kind of hear what they're talking about and what they're saying. So I'm like, Cuba? 
yeah, I'm going to go. But I'm thinking, like, I'm not about to go because why y'all just not telling me now? I've been to Cuba. I don't really understand what the f- Puff is doing in Cuba. Now, granted, there's probably a lot of stuff going on in Cuba I don't know about, but what is, what, it's not really like... I said, when we going? It's they the said tomorrow. the most place you've ever been. They said tomorrow. Here right. we go with this tomorrow shit. That's what he did the last time. We're leaving tomorrow. It's always like a quick. And that's what caused you to decide to get the to leave. out. And all I had to do was walk out that door in the car service that's waiting out there. You just hop up in there and you just say, take me back to the house because he's going to come back. Okay. When you hear them talking about. Diddy has been facing a uh, wave, a wave of uh, lawsuits, right? Uh, after the indictment, there were even more well, lawsuits. That a hun- came 120 just from Busby's firm. Initially, it's Tony Busby, that. the attorney Tony Busby, said that he had 120 clients. He is so far, I believe, he's filed about 20 or just under 20 uh, of those lawsuits. But every day there are new lawsuits. But one of them has already gotten before a judge, and the judge has made a ruling in this, not on the merits of the lawsuit. This is a super important ruling. But it is very important because the thing you have to remember about all of the Tony Busby lawsuits, his clients have filed them anonymously as Jane Doe's or John Doe's. Um, But the judge said, for one of them at least, that's not going to fly, and has ruled that that Tony Busby and his client need to reveal uh, the person's identity. And and part of the reasoning has to do with that it's hard to defend yourself against somebody where you don't know who they are. Now, it is true that there is a discovery process where the defense can find out more from prosecutors, but the judge seems to be saying, you got to disclose it from the jump. The reason that's so significant is that there is a real push for people to file these suits to come forward, and there is this feeling that you can do it anonymously and hopefully settle where you never have to go to court. At least that's the MO. Right. So and that's what Tony Busby. This throws a huge monkey wrench into the mix. Yeah, it was inevitable, right? I mean, eventually, all plaintiffs have to say who they are. They have to give Diddy an opportunity to cross-examine them, to dig up whatever facts and evidence they have against these against these accusers, and you're going to have to come clean. But to your point, Harvey, all they really want, the game, right, the way it's played is you try to sue. Diddy presumably knows who they are. Um, and will try to they'll try to reach a settlement with that person before before they have to reveal their name. When that doesn't happen, the person's inevitably going to have to come clean. Okay, Jason, let me now yep. do a twist on this. So there is at least one lawsuit where a an accuser is suing two celebrities, um, one of whom the allegation is that uh, this person, the, this a male, assaulted right. um, the plaintiff with Diddy. And the second is a female celebrity who watched. They're called celebrity list- one and celebrity two. Celebr- I think it was A and B. Yeah. Celebrity A yeah, and yeah. celebrity B. So the question, if the plaintiff has to be identified, do they have to identify the defendants as well? If they're suing them and they want money from them, then there's going to be full disclosure eventually, once it gets down the road. Now, does it matter that each case will go before a different judge? Yeah, right? it so- does matter. Because even though the judge in this and sta- case... And said state's that, different. Right. State's and these, different. Th- this one was a federal court. Um, but each judge could look at it differently. And we have... Listen, in California, there are lots of Jane Doe lawsuits, uh, John Doe lawsuits. So, um, you know, this doesn't mean it's going to happen to everybody, but it opened everybody's eyes. And by the way, we should just say one other thing to button this up. We're working on our third uh, downfall of Diddy documentary yep. on Tubi. So in the second documentary... Um, Tony Busby, who's representing a number of these Including plaintiffs. the one who just, they said they have to reveal. That's right. right. He said to us in this documentary that they have already sent out a bunch of demand letters and that the idea is settle with us or we'll file a lawsuit. And it would seem from what we're hearing when you watch the second documentary that there are, I would almost say, a number of celebrities who have already, already settled. Yeah. Um, because you saw what happened to Diddy. Right. That if you settled with Cassie, we may then not be talking else about goes this. Away. Right. I know. Yeah. Hi, this is Pam from Manhattan Beach, and I wanted to weigh in on the Diddy story. I think the girl coming forward or the boy coming forward, whoever it is, it gives more credibility and just not coming out of the woodwork. So as uncomfortable it would be for the person, I think it's really important. 
Yeah, I mean, we will yeah. see what happens. I, I, this is a really interesting it turn in this thing. a lot of things in these lawsuits that, and yeah. clients that Tony Busby it does. has. Because on Monday, Tony Busby and his legal partners, they filed a suit against Combs on behalf of a John Doe who lives in California. The lawsuit states, this case seeks compensatory and punitive damages for the drugging and sexual assault of a 10-year-old boy when he met defendant Sean Combs for an audition. The conduct described herein is shockingly typical of how Combs conducted himself for many years. And look, that is true. Many of the allegations from Combs' accusers say they were drugged and then they were assaulted, that this is a pattern. And of course, we know when it comes to the federal charges, Combs is accused of using drugs to have people engage in those freak-off sessions. Sean P. Diddy Combs is currently being held in federal jail in Brooklyn facing sex trafficking, racketeering, and conspiracy charges. Two of the suits filed are from accusers who say they were minors at the time they were allegedly drugged and assaulted by the music mogul. Again, minors. And for the first time, other celebrities are now cited and accused of participating in an alleged result, though they are not being identified at this particular moment in time. Look, <clears throat> you know what I've said. You know what I've been on the record for saying. Sean P. Diddy Combs is in a world of trouble. I'm not attaching guilt or innocence. I have no idea about his guilt or innocence. At no time have you heard me implicate him in anything. I don't know. All I'm talking about is speaking to people who cover Hollywood, speaking to legal analysts and expert, knowing law enforcement official, taking into account that the feds are after him. Say some state crime, some isolated incident or whatever. When you're talking about racketeering and sex trafficking, it's a problem. Talk about sex workers coming across state lines. That's a problem. When you're now talking about minors being involved, that's a problem. And when you talk about the potential of stars, other stars, other notable figures being implicated, that's a huge big time problem. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I told Diddy no at first. Diddy paid me a bag. And we did some things that I'm not proud of, and my wife's not proud of. I didn't know he was recording. Uh, I know this. Do not entertain none of this nonsense and nothing over the phone. Uh, I'm going to need you to get rid of all the leftover pizza boxes. The what? All the boxes left over from the pizza. Make sure you recycle the plastic like we talked about. will be exposed. I mean, when I walk in, I mean, I, I definitely um, take pride in being the originator of the pre preparation of the sex. Those little things that I, I personally like. A lot of ladies, they right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you no. got to tell him no. All of these uh, big, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. Now check this out. Diego and Puff settled out of court in January 2024. Puffy's homes are raided in March. There's no way you're going to convince me that a company that powerful, Diego operates in 180 of 194 countries in the world.
they operate in 180 out of 194 countries in the world. You are not going to convince me that one plus one does not equal two. There is no way they were forced to settle with Puffy in January and less than two months later, his homes are raided. And I'm going to tell you how Puffy, how I believe Puffy gave them the ammunition to go after him, Art. When Cassie, when Cassie made her accusations against Puff, he settled in about 24 hours. And they settled in November of 2023. Mind you, he's already in court with Diego since the spring of 2023. Watch this timeline. He sues Diego in the spring. Cassie comes out in the fall. He settles with Cassie in 24 hours. Diego is watching this. So when Diego decides to settle with Puff outside of court, they did this knowing full well, we about to go after you and destroy you. You are messing with the Illuminati. You have no idea who you effing with, Sean Combs. And when Puff was so quick to settle with Cassie, that showed the whole world he was vulnerable. That showed the whole world he had skeletons in his closet. And do you know what I think Diego did after they settled with Puff? I bet you after they settled with Puff, they probably never even made it to the airplane. They picked up the phone. It's Terry Crews. I am an actor, author, former athlete, advocate, and a survivor of a sexual assault. This past year, we have seen powerful men in Hollywood and elsewhere finally held accountable for sexual harassment and assault. We also saw the backlash survivors faced after coming forward. I wanted these survivors to know that I believed them. I supported them and that this happened to me too. This encouraged me to come forward with my own experience and reflect on the cult of toxic masculinity that exists in our society. Then, in 2016, while at a party with my wife, I was sexually assaulted by a successful Hollywood agent. The assault lasted only minutes, but what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power, that he was in control. You know, the first reaction was to be violent. And I immediately held back. Why weren't you? You're a big, powerful man. Why didn't you? Be Senator, as a black man in America. <sighs> Say it as it is. I think it's important. You only have a few shots at success. You only have a few chances to make yourself a viable member of the community. I'm from Flint, Michigan. I have seen many, many young black men who were provoked into violence and they were in prison and then, or they were killed and they're not here. My wife for years prepared me she said, if you ever get goaded, if you ever get prodded, if you ever have anyone try to, try to push you into any kind of situation, don't do it. Don't be violent. And she trained me. I'll be honest with you. It was the strength of my wife who trained me and told me, if this situation happens, let's leave. And the training worked. But has there been retaliation against you for what you are saying now to the public? Thank you for your question, Senator. One specific in incident of retaliation was uh, I've done three movies uh, called The Expendables with Sylvester Stallone. The producer of that film called my manager and asked him to drop my case in order, so, uh, in order for me to be in the fourth installment of the movie. 
And if I didn't, there would be trouble. Oh, dear. Senator Klobuchar. Well, thank you very much. Are you going to be in the fourth installment, I hope? Uh, no. Because wow. be simply because, I'm sorry, thank you for your question, Senator. Uh, That's good. That's very yes. polite. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, simply because this same producer is, produ is going under, he's under his own sexual assault investigation. Yeah. And, you know, abusers protect abusers. And this is one thing I had to decide whether I was going to draw the line on am I going to be a part of this or am I going to take a stand? And there are projects that I had to turn down. Mm -hmm. Bang, she liked to scream a lot. And she was screaming a lot. You know, she was in. Scream or sing? Like, oh, you know, oh. so she like she sing. <laughs> and she's a, she's a, she's a big time R&B. Anybody that, you know, that's in Houston that knew it was a going around Houston a lot of rappers and shit. then you know who I'm talking about. Now the dude that she was he was a multi-millionaire. We all know him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was a mogul for the record. It's not Jay-Z. This brother here is 10 times more famous than uh, Kim. Is this person in movies as well? They Have they made movies? Yeah, they have made movies. Okay. I've seen them in a couple movies. That, uh, that, uh, Beyonce was in movies. A lot of people been in movies. Now this tape never made it to the light of day because the rapper that had it, Pimp C, ended up mysteriously dying from overdosing on a drug called lean, which people just mixed with Sprite in like every rapper drink. But you know Diddy and Jay-Z are not gonna let him get away with it after he's passing around this tape of Beyonce. Diddy did anything Beyonce wanted. Okay, fun fact, a lot of people don't know that Cheesecake we went and got was for Beyonce. She was upstairs the whole time. That's a fun fact people don't know. People like, y'all walked together Cheesecake, it was for Beyonce. Why Beyonce was around while they're filming an MTV show, who knows, but she was always at Diddy's parties. I was throwing this party for the MTV Movie Award. Beckham's was there, I remember. Beyonce was there. Security comes to get me and says, you have, a, you have a guest here who wasn't on the list. And I'm like, cool. It's like Michael Jackson. So then I go towards the back and it's Michael. I'm like, Michael, what you, what's up? Like, what you doing? And he was like, you know, I'm here with Brett Ratner. You know, we, we, came, we came to the party. Is everything cool? Can we come? Now, Brett Ratner is a huge director. Movies like Rush Hour always went to Diddy parties. And he has tons of essay allegations on him, much like Diddy and Harvey Weinstein. If you want to get ahead in the business, you had to do whatever they wanted or you weren't moving up. But that's another story for another day. And then he leans over to me. We're taking some pictures. He leans over to me. He's like, where's Beyonce? So I run up on B. B is on the dance floor. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like B, um, you know, Michael's here. He, wanna, he wants to meet you, whatever. And so I get Mike, you know, bring him over. He's like, you know, I love the record, whatever, whatever. He goes, tells the DJ to play the record. And he was also ready to go for his as a man. I think we all as men at that time wanted to dance with Beyonce. Now, the alleged rumors are that Jay and Beyonce had an open relationship. And at Diddy parties, they got whoever they wanted. Much like this other couple, which is Jada Pinkett and Will Smith. Puffy, just large, just the man. I think Puffy is now in, in that rap renaissance mm -hmm. kind of being part of defining right. really what. Bro. I was in one of those uh, exotic bookstores with him. I saw this dude pick up butt plugs. And that's the first time I ever seen some shit like that. And when I said, yo, my man, what you getting this for? He said, you know, can I do my shopping by myself? And I said, yeah. And when I looked up there, it said butt plugs. <laughs> I bust out laughing and went to the front door. So you heard the rumors? I knew I used to wait outside a Turkish baths for them. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together. <laughs> To each his own, though, bruh. But that's a lot of sh that these guys get into 
when they start having certain meetings with certain people and they meet them at the Turkish bath and they do their meetings and they meet their people in those type of situations where they're comfortable with. So they don't have to worry about uh, their indiscretions coming out. You mean? You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, twice, sometimes, three times a week, me and the driver be outside. He'll run into the Turkish bath. Got that big-ass tub at home, but you want to go? <laughs> no, go ahead. 